Um, now, let's talk about the three weirdest things that you encountered during a pre-buy inspection. Um, well, the, the ultimate had to be the different, completely different aeroplane. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, the serial number was wrong. The, uh, the type certificate was wrong. The only thing that was matched the pictures that were delivered to me as far as the records were concerned was the livery of the aeroplane. It, it was quite sort of... Uh, so what, what part of the world was this? Was this... Uh, it was Europe. Oh, it was <laughs> Europe. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, they you, so basically they sent you the, the, the maintenance records of one aeroplane and then you went to expect a different one. Uh, exactly. Yes. Yes. The, as I say, the only similarity what, from the photograph was the livery of the aircraft. They had about six aircraft all in the same livery. Even when uh, I asked the question, they actually truly believed that these records matched the particular aircraft that they'd sent me through to see. Wow. So yeah, that was quite um, quite a shock. <laughs> What's the second weirdest thing you've, you've encountered? The, one of them had been, um, they said that uh, the aircraft had been in storage for some time. It was actually down in the south of France, a well-known storage facility. So Europe again. So Europe yes. again. Yeah, they're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they said the aircraft had been stowed, uh, stored very well. It was all very properly maintained. It had been in storage for two years. It was a Gulfstream 200, I think it was, G200. Oh, okay. They said... It's, it's in a very, very good condition. The owner, the prospective owner who'd contracted me to carry out the PPI had actually said they'd seen the aircraft themselves okay. and were very impressed with it. Okay. Uh, when I went out to see it, there was a delightful bird's nest oh. in the uh, fan, <laughs> in the common nozzle assembly at the back of the engine. Oh, there so was three the bird's the nests. The birds created a nest. Yeah. <laughs> in three of the uh, van um, nozzle assemblies at the back, yeah. Sort of the little wavy shape that you get at the back yeah. there. There was a bird's nest in three of them. They'd seen the aircraft themselves. It had been well maintained <laughs> and it was in good storage capability. Well, part of the storage process is that you have to run the engines once a week. And the other part of that is they have to remain covered. So mm -hmm. how on earth had the, engine, the birds ever got in there to build a nest and make home for a good amount of time if it had been well maintained? So I, so I gather the guy didn't buy the airplane. Did, did he buy the airplane in the end or? Um, we, well, I'm not too sure. I obviously gave my recommendations not to. Okay, yeah. So okay. Uh, I don't know where he went with that one in the end. Yeah, what, what's the third one that you've encountered that's weird? The third one was, um, it was actually in Teterboro. Oh, okay. Oh, so okay. Yes, uh, I thought, ring the changes a little bit. Obviously, yeah, okay. the American route, the nose gear uh, had okay. actually collapsed. Oh. on the aircraft and it was parked up on a, a nice little bit of um, sort of a no support with uh, the landing gear just sort of hanging around. So you didn't know that when you went out to... Absolutely no way. You got there and surprise surprise nose gears collapsed. Yeah nose gears collapsed so we had to sort of lift it put it onto the trestles and then inspect the aircraft. So again I don't know where the information had come around that, uh, that it was a well-maintained aircraft here are your records. So even through those three simplistic scenarios it just shows and every one of these was a vip airplane yeah it just shows quite clearly that um this is the difference that i have experienced from a vip world to the commercial world outside of the routine they are not being managed very well which is why you have to really make sure you have a very well managed engineering organization looking after your aircraft yeah well i mean obviously as i was saying you know, in the airlines you've got all airline people that understand airplanes when you get a company or a high net worth individual decide to buy a jet um you know very often they don't know where to go to buy the jet they don't know how to hire a pilot or an engineer and, yep. and then they try and do it on the cheap end and then all these sort of problems happen so i mean that's a, and as martin pointed out and as i've always pointed out on all these uh, these episodes of bizjet tv you really need to get your people right besides the air because Absolutely. otherwise you, you don't want to end up buying an airplane with a bird's nest in it or what with the glass <laughs> or, or whatnot okay. and everyone's surprised when they see it they're thinking well how can you be surprised? You're, you're looking after this. so Yeah, exactly. That's all from me on this episode. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and share this video. And uh, that's all from Fab Polly at BizChat TV. And I'll see you in the next one.